Have you ever heard of Monte Carlo simulations in trading and investing? It's a pretty nifty tool that's often talked about in blogs and backtests, but did you know it can be used to measure risk and uncertainty? I'm biased trading here, and today we're going to be going over Monte Carlo simulations. I often talk about this on my Twitter page, and you'll often see these kind of visuals as shown on the screen, but they are very useful in backtesting and trading. Now, Monte Carlo is actually a statistical tool that will help you measure the uncertainty and robustness of your strategy for its path sequences. With this simulation, you can create a model of the different outcomes of your trades if they had been taken in a different path or sequence. So what does this actually mean for you? Well, by using Monte Carlo simulations in trading, you can gain a better understanding of the risk and uncertainty of your trading strategy. This is because Monte Carlo simulations let you run your backtest thousands of times in different orders. It's pretty cool, right? This technique applies random changes to historical trades and then calculates a new equity curve. By doing this, we can verify if our trading strategy is robust enough to withstand the random changes that will happen in the market. But did you know this technique is widely used in other fields too? It's actually used in um, physical science, energy, biology, artificial intelligence, project management, transportation, research, development, insurance, and there's a couple more to name a few. And the reason it's so popular is because it's given a wide, it gives a wide range of possible outcomes and the probability of them occurring based on different parameters. This makes it a great tool for key decision making. Now in trading, we mainly use Monte Carlo simulations to analyze how our trading strategy would have performed under different scenarios. For example, we can see how our strategy would have done if it had slightly worse entries or exits, or if we missed a few good trades. It is not a perfect tool, but it does serve a good estimation tool that helps us get a possible approximation of future reality of our trading strategy. Now here's how it works. It takes all the trades you've made in the past and applies small random changes to them. These changes can include modifying your entry or exit a bit, changing the orders of the trades, or even skipping some trades altogether. After applying these changes to all your trades, it calculates a new equity curve that gives you an idea of how well your trading strategy can survive with these random changes. But here's the thing, a single simulation isn't going to be enough to give you an accurate result. That's why we normally perform hundreds of Monte Carlo simulations, and in each simulation, it makes random changes to your trades and gives you a new potential equity curve. By looking at hundreds of these simulations, we can get a pretty accurate idea of how robust your trading strategy is, and what your drawdown is, your risk of ruin, and what those kind of things could look like. Now this is the really cool thing about Monte Carlo simulations, is that it uses probability dist distributions to describe uh, uncertainty in variables. This means that when you are performing risk analysis in a given situation, you can use this technique to get data on possible future outcomes, and that's really powerful stuff. Now, there are a couple different types of probability distributions that are used in Monte Carlo simulations. Let's go over just a couple. So first is the uniform probability distribution. All values have equal chance of occurring. This means that the user is only interested in finding the minimum or the maximum values. A great example of where this is used is in predicting future sales revenue or maybe a new product or service by calculating production costs in the company. Next is the normal or bell curve probability distribution. The goal here is to define the mean and the standard deviation to describe the variation. Values that are near the mean have a higher chance of occurrence, and this distribution is often used to describe a wide uh, variety of natural occurrences and other kind of features such as inflation rates or energy prices. Now moving on to log normal probability distribution. This one is different from the normal distribution because the values are positively skewed instead of being symmetrical. It's perfect for analyzing values that don't go below zero digits but have infinite posi uh, positive potential. Examples of these variables can be expressed by a log normal probability distribution, including oil reserves, stock market prices, real estate property prices. Lastly, we've got the triangular probability distribution that is all about defining the minimum and most likely and maximum values. The values that fall under the most likely category have the highest potential of occurrence. The distribution is ideal really for expressing different product uh, inventory levels and past sales history per the uh, unit of time. Now there are a couple more, but overall they kind of just give you the general idea of how these probabilities can be skewed. And then you've also got some examples here on the screen to kind of give you that general um, visual guide of how, how they kind of look. Next is the types to use in trading. It's a great tool that can help you test the robustness of your trading strategy and give you some key performance metrics to work with. 
For example, you can get a better understanding of your risk of ruin, annual rate of returns, drawdown ratios, maximum and min median drawdowns. When you have this important information at your fingertips, you'll be in much in a much better position to make informed decisions about your trading strategy, capital allocation, and position sizing. There are a few different methods you can use to perform Monte Carlo simulation analysis in your own trading system, but one of the most commonly used is the original and the recycle method. This method involves taking your historical trade results and reorganizing them in a new order. Then you run the simulation maybe a thousand times to generate a thousand new equity curves. This gives you a better idea of the potential risks you may face when, the, uh, when trading uh, this particular strategy. The key assumption here is that your trade results will remain the same, but they will appear in potentially a different order than they did in the past. Once you've got your hands on this kind of simulation results, you can use the data to calculate the important performance metrics. This includes the maximum or the average drawdown of all those new 1000 equity curves. Interestingly enough, the average drawdown is going to be typically higher than your original backtest drawdown. This is where the data from your average drawdown analysis comes in handy, as it can help you make the right decisions when it comes to your trading system of allocation and position sizing. By implementing this simulation analysis, you can have a better expectation when it comes to your trading strategy. For example, if your trading system has a backtest drawdown of 10% and you size your trades based on that data, but your live trading produces a drawdown of 15%, you may have possibly turned off your strategy because you were oversized. However, by using the original and the resample Monte Carlo simulation analysis method, you would have been aware of the probability of a drawdown to this level occurring, prompting you to maybe modify your size beforehand. Another advantage of the simulation method is that it provides great insights on when to expect profitability. Let's say you're tr trading casually and you make a general guess that your strategy is no longer profitable after it makes 30 consecutive trades in a row and they don't result in positive um, equity growth. In this scenario, you might be tempted to turn off your trading strategy because you can't predict the future and if you continue trading with this new strategy, it looks like it isn't working. But if you take the time to analyze your new trading strategy using Monte Carlo simulations, you could understand that there's a likelihood that you won't make any profits until you actually reach 40 trades or above. When it comes to carrying out Monte Carlo simulation analysis, there are a couple of trading uh, properties that can be randomized. Let's take a closer look at two of these properties. First up, we have the chance of, sorry, first we have to change the trades orders. This can be done in two ways. The first way is by randomly shuffling the original order of trades. The second way involves more than just shuffling the trades. It goes further and actually randomly picks the overall number of trades from all the trades available. This can result in a different list of trades, which has the potential of picking one trade multiple times and not picking other trades at all. The second property is skipping some trades. In this case, we have deliberately make some trades to be randomized, randomly missed based on given probabilities. This helps, helps give a trader an idea of how the empty curve would appear if some of the trades would have randomly been skipped. In a real trading scenario, you can miss a trade. So if there is a system failure, or maybe you stop trading, or there isn't locates, it's important to consider this and actually weigh out this probability when carrying out a Monte Carlo simulation analysis. Now, Monte Carlo simulation analysis is an amazing tool, and it is one we created a um, Python script for all our members in How to Backtest Bootcamp, as I truly believe it's a very important part of backtesting that can really help traders. With this tool, you can assess your trading system performance and make the right strategy decisions. It's a great way to understand whether your trading strategy is good enough and robust enough to survive the small changes of the market. By generating trading strategy results through multiple simulations, you can get an idea of how your trades are likely to perform in the future and the potential risks. This way, you'll be in better control of your trading and you can make better decisions, potentially to maybe cease your trading when using a poor strategy. If you're a retail trader and you've never done backtesting, I highly recommend investing in tools like Monte Carlo simulation analysis. It can really help um, better your training performance and improve your results. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed it, please like and share it with anyone else who might be interested.